Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to look at some writing apps because that's what I like to do and they're fun to review and I think they're fun to use. And today you get to see two writing apps from the same company and they're basically the same writing app, to put it bluntly. Um, Campfire Pro and Campfire Blaze, both from Campfire Technologies. And that's how it works is you put your name and your app name and everybody knows who you are. It's pretty awesome. But if you're uh, familiar to this channel, you'll know that I do like to review a good writing app. And um, obviously, I prefer the ones that really do a lot to help me you know, set up my stories. And uh, so that's what we're going to look at is how well these set up the story. Um, so I'm going to be looking at each one kind of in tandem. So like I'll cover the character section for Pro and then for Blaze and so on. And I'll just kind of give you a comparison between the two so you can decide if you like either of them and which one you'll want. Um, but I'm going to just show you real quick what the differences are between them. So um, if you go to Campfire Technologies, you have an option to choose either one. Campfire Blaze is currently in beta right now, which means it's free until the end of the month. And then once the, uh, November hits, they're going to start opening up their paid plans. They will have a free version available. So even if you just want to test the program, you can certainly do that. Uh, nothing's locking you out from trying. Campfire Pro, I'm not sure if they have a free version or not. I think they have a trial. But either way, I do think you can test either one. Um, just bear in mind, you're basically getting the same program, regardless of the one you choose. The difference is Campfire Pro is desktop only, and it's legacy, meaning they're not going to be doing any more additions to it. Uh, what you have is what you'll get. You might get a bug fix or two but you're not going to get any new major updates. If you want major updates, you're going to have to go over to Blaze because that's where they're putting all the focus now. And I will tell you that um, just on premise, obviously, you know, you want to go with the one that's going to be updated. You want to want go with the one that has more features. I do think Blaze covers that, you know, scratch pretty well. So if you're looking for a really great writing software and you've decided that it's down to these two, you're probably going to be better off with Blaze just right off the top. But I still want to show you why that's true and why it might not be true. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. But let's start with the price first because, you know, I, in my opinion, price is always what matters. Free things are great things as long as they work, but it's only as, as good as, you know, the software allows you to do. So if you come to the campfiretechnology.com website, you will have an option to check out either one. And you, I would just recommend that you explore the site a little bit to see which one you like. And then have an imagination. You really have to come into this with imagination. Uh, if I'm critical about either software, it's that it has so many options that if you're not a person who does well with conceptualizing, you might get lost pretty quickly. That's going to be true of both programs. But um, let's go ahead and just let's pop into Campfire Pro first since that's the original program. Just seeing, kind of get a look at what the um, design is. So, this is a sample of what Pro looks like. It's again, it's got a lot of customization on it, um, but it's an older model, so some of the design principles may be a little off. But you know, it still works. And again, I'm going to demonstrate parts of it uh, here in a minute. But um, you can see that it's pretty flexible. So where Pro uh, shines is you have all these categories of character. Um, you, you, like you'll see that you have customi customization for all the different things that you're working on. And you do have a free trial here if you, if you are interested. But um, it gives you an opportunity to, to really kind of hone in on your particular area of expertise. If we'll check out the pricing real quick because part of the joy of comparing is to look how much things cost. So you'll see that the trial is free. The Pro is where it comes with all the basics, character development, story timelines, maps, and again, you can click on each one to see uh, more information on it. My opinion is Pro is fine, but it doesn't really accomplish the best until you go into the world building pack. So the world building pack adds $25 to the overall. You can actually buy them separately. You can buy Pro first and then buy world building later if you want. I would say if you're going to do either just go for the the complete package especially if you're uh, if you write fantasy if you write or if you're building a game for fantasy then the world building pack is the way to go now fortunately blaze is going to have all this too so let's go ahead and look at blaze real quick just to kind of get an overview how that's going to be different i think so you can see that's kind of the same thing um the big difference is the design of it it's got a different background it's a little you know, it's much more app oriented so it looks a little nicer in comparison. Um, I do have some issues with some of the functionality. I'm going to show you that when I get to the demonstration. Um, but it does do everything that Pro does, plus it adds a manuscript editor. 
That's the one thing that Pro doesn't have is with Pro, you can design your characters, your locations, and everything, but you can't write your story. With Blaze, apparently you can, although in the beta, you still can't do that. In the beta, they're still putting in a few modules. I can tell you right now, based on these are the modules down here. Um, this is actually how they how Blaze differs from Pro, because with Pro you have everything in the same program, but with Blaze, everything's by modules, and it's based on the modules you buy. So like characters, locations, character arcs, these all have separate prices. So you are in effect building your own app when you do this. Now there's good things and bad things about that. The good thing is that if you don't want to work with languages or systems, you don't have to, and you don't have to pay for it. So if you really just want a character creator, then just buy the character creator and that's it. And you're you're gonna spend however, you know, whatever money you want to spend on that, which I'll show you that, that in a second. But I think Blaze really matters most when you go into all of them. So I think that's where it shines. I know I, I got an email from them recently uh, just kind of outlining their price structure. So I don't know if they have it printed on their main site, but it's pretty cheap per, uh, per item. But collectively, it's pretty expensive. So, you know, you kind of decide what you want there. But they do work on a free system, monthly system, yearly, and lifetime. So... Free is, you can get anything you want, but it's you, your uses are limited. Um, I never think the free version of anything is worth having because, you know, it's the reason why it's free. Basically, they're telling you, you know, we're not going to really give you everything you need or want. We're just going to give you a taste so that you want more. It's part of marketing. I just say, look, if you want it, try out the monthly. If you like the monthly, go for the lifetime. I wouldn't even bother with the yearly because... You know, for example, the character module, I believe, is going to be um, $1 per month or $10 a year, but for the lifetime, it's 30 And, of course, once you go lifetime, you never have to have to pay for it again. I say 30 bucks for forever use is good. And the thing is, their character app is pretty darn good. Like, when when you'll see, the, when I compare Pro to Blaze, just in the character module, you're going to see that Blaze really is kind of stepping up. Um I'm not. I wasn't a big fan of Blaze in my um, first video. As I, if you watch, go back and watch the beta one or day one video I did a few weeks ago. You'll find that I was just confused about everything. Well, I, I did take the time to learn some of the functionality, and I actually, once you learn how to do it, it's uh, it's actually pretty nice. Um, but I'll I'll get to that in a minute. But um, but yeah, you you just, I think when you get everything, you're going to spend three forty five. So three hundred forty five over seventy five. It's a big difference, but again, Blaze is something that they're going to keep updating and keep adding to, whereas Pro is, you know, it's done. If you get Pro, you know, you may love it, but I hope you love it because that's all you're getting. So that's kind of how it is. So go ahead and just take a look at both sites and see what you think. Um, the last point, oh yeah, this map here. The last point I want to make for like the world building element is to really make the most of this program. You want to also, you know, take advantage of the applications that it has at other writing tools don't have and one of the, the world building is one of its strongest assets in my opinion um what's really cool about the the map system is that you can link um, and i don't have this in either of my examples so you just have to look it up on the website but it has um, the ability to pin items on a map and then you can click on it and it'll go into an information page so in order to do that you probably want something that's going to make maps or you know so if you don't have like a basic drawing program and you can always use Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any of those, and that's perfectly fine. Or you can have a dedicated software for map making. So there's a thing called Car Campaign Cartographer 3. I've mentioned it in another video. I have a copy through Humble Bundle. I still haven't activated it yet. Uh, I really need to do that. But this is like primo map making software. It's been around for about 20 years. Um, they keep making it better, and it's just this is another one where if you have the time, look it up. Campaign Cartographer Three um, to get everything. It's gonna, you know, you need to take out a loan, <laughs> but um, even if you just go for the basic, it, you'll find that if you're the kind of writer who likes maps or even plans to use maps, even for something as simple as showing a building. Like there's a book I have um, that I, uh, my favorite book of 2018. It's called The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And I actually just bought the author's second book uh, earlier tonight, so I do plan to read that soon. Uh, both books have maps in them, um, pictures and, and all that. And it's, you know, you don't have to have it, but it just makes the reading experience better. So if you're a writer who wants a map, whether it makes it easier to plan or even if you plan to put it in a book, um, this is also a good program to have. Uh, just keep that in mind. But Campfire Pro and Blaze both 
would make great use of that type of software. So anyway, that's my overview of the two. So let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between them in action, if you want to stay with me. So first of all, with Campfire Pro, again, as I said, it's desktop, so it's going to have uh, be fully usable on your computer. Uh, it will mean that you'll have one license, or it might be three. I'm not sure. You have to check the license if you get it. But um, it's fully on your computer. There's no chance of being hacked or anything, so that's always good. But what you'll find it does have, you know, the user interface. You know, it's it looks fine. Um, but you'll start by new story or open story. I've already created one, so I'm going to open mine. So we'll click on that. So I'm opening up my story called The Company Secret. And this is an actual book I'm working on. I'm not going to go into spoiler territory at this point, but basically you can see I wrote in the synopsis, Nikali must expose the deepest secret of the world's top tech company before it can turn his dream job and the dream jobs of others into a nightmare. And I haven't filled in the synopsis or anything yet because I really just did this for my test. But you'll see that I have a hot bar down here and then I also have one up at the top that I can choose. And I did buy the world building pack with this, so um, remember if you get just the character pack, you're not going to have the world building pack uh, native. You have to spend the extra $25 to get it, um, or you can do what I did and just wait for a discount to come into the mail. But anyway, if you go into the hot bar, you can kind of you know check your normal things you'd expect in a in a program like this. So basically what we'll do is we'll go to the character panel first because that's where I put the most work into this. You'll find that you, you have um, basic info. Some of these uh, windows have elements in there that are already kind of importable or they're templates rather. So if I want to add some info here I can just click on an add bar and then I think it adds an extra thing down here. So let's say if I want to talk about um, let's say job um, used to work <coughs> for a bookstore now he works for the um, biggest company in the world um, if you click on any of the folders you can add or add uh, an item or add a group so I believe group is the folder, and I think add is the item. So if I can add an item here, uh, it's a new character, and I can just, you know, if I want to put them in the villains, or if I want to make them a hero, I'll actually put it in a hero section, because I know who all my heroes are. I really haven't put much time into my villains just yet. But um, if I want to say, uh, I think it's Billy Stevens, I believe is my other big character. Billy Stevens. So he is our... Let's see, security guard at the biggest company in the world. I would actually put the company name uh, off camera. Again, I'm not trying to spoil anything at this point. Because again, I'm actually writing this story. It's a real story. Uh, it's not a sample like it is. My Blaze example is a sample. This is an actual story I'm working on. Um, but you'll see, again, I have all these items that I can use, statistics I can use, like if I want to add age, weight, height, and all that. So if I want to add, um, I think, do I do it here? Or no, I do it through here. Maybe I'll do height. I'll do one for weight. And so this is a good way to just kind of plan what you want your characters to be. So I think Billy, um, I think he's like 25. I actually haven't figured that out, but I'm going to assume he's about 25. Yeah, I know he's like 5 foot, uh, say 11, I think is about right. Um, so I haven't really thought all this stuff through. Uh, right now he's just a guy sitting behind a desk, but he does have a major role in the story as it continues. So I'll certainly no more um, as I go. I do often find that I understand my characters better as I write them. So this is a case where I would actually probably go back and fill things in as I learn more about them in, this, in the how the story flows or unfolds. Um, and also, I just I find that it's reflexive and reflexive development can help. But this is where you would do all the um, extras and it's pretty straightforward and pro. But I think if you right click anywhere in the window, then you're going to be able to pull up new panels. So if I want a new text panel, I can just pop that in here. And now you, know, you can use the little drag bar to move it. And you can also resize. 
So what's cool about this is if you have um, if you have the corkboard effect, like let's say you're a visual person and you just you need to see things in a certain way, it might be that I want to have a panel here for Billy for job duties. And so this might because his function in the story is to work, I'm going to probably want to be able to do um, something based on his job duties. So now there actually there was a panel for lists. So I might actually rather do that. So let's see what that. Uh, this might actually be a better panel to use. So let's try, actually, yeah, let's actually, let's delete this. And let's use this instead, because then what we can do, and this is part of the process of, of using any kind of writing software, is just learning how it functions and learning how you can best use it. So I do consider myself a visual person, but I also find I can get lost in the weeds if I'm not careful. So right now what I would say is I'm going to call this job duties. Again, that's sort of my whole point here of having this. And then if I add a, a particular item, then I can describe what he's doing. So um, let's say main duty check, uh, check in employees and visitors um, other main duty keep bad people out okay there you go because he's a security guard and I don't know if I mentioned that but uh, that's his job. So anyway, that's an example of characters in Campfire Pro. And so again, the options, uh, you can do text panels, image panels, statistics, and so on. It's all pretty straightforward. And the links panel is when you get to connect your, like let's say if I want to connect Billy to um, to Nick. It's actually one of the reasons why I wanted the program is so I could do this exact thing. So let's just try that real quick. Um, let's say... We'll call it connections. I'll probably come up with something more interesting later. But if I connect them to characters, let's see if I can highlight who. And well, maybe if I go back to Nick and do the same thing. Add a links panel. And I'll probably want to move things around a little bit. Connections. And change this to characters. Now the question now becomes, can I actually do that? I can't. So if I do add, I can decide who I'm connecting to. So I'm not going to connect him to himself. That's dumb. So I'll connect him to Billy. Okay. And uh, if I add an element. Um, yeah. So add an element. Then you open up description of relation. Um, We'll say frenemy. It's kind of what they are in the beginning. They become actual friends later. Spoiler alert. But but for now. And so what's cool is if I go to Billy's character page. Connections, Nick. There it is. Frenemy. So it actually connects the two by the same thing. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm glad that it does that. So that's just one example of what um, Campfire... Pro can do. Um, so let's look at how that differs from Campfire Blaze. So we're in Blaze now, and if you go back and watch my video on the day one beta, you're going to find that I have had a lot of trouble figuring this thing out. You give yourself enough time, and you can start kind of you know navigating a little easier. And that's the same thing with Pro. In both cases, you really got to just you know make good use of both your left and right mouse button. That's something I wasn't doing much of when I was testing as I wasn't using my right mouse button enough. But anyway, this is my test project. This is not something I plan to really do anything with. So it's kind of a joke assignment. But if you um, click on it, you'll find you have an overview of the story. So already on the home page, looks kind of nice. And you have kind of like your reports window at the beginning. So if I wanted a banner, Maybe this is where I put my book cover, which I have not created because I'm not going to take this seriously. But this is where I would put that. So if I click on it, you can just upload the image you want. If you just find something you want as your 
can be your theme or if you do your cover you could certainly upload and pick from here uh, but we're not going to do that right now so pinned i haven't really explored this much as you can see but let's say we'll add one now just to kind of see what we have options for so let's say if i want to look up items the cup of coffee it's kind of what this is about if i click on that and choose now i can actually you know this might be a quick way to refer back to the you know the element that i want to cover okay and so this whole thing is your overview um, you don't really need to do anything on this page it's just there to for you to get a, a sense of what you're working with uh, you can see that right now i'm working on 584 words with eight entries now i don't know how it's going to differ once you get the um the writing app open but it's uh you know it's cool so anyway you can kind of see what i've worked on just you know in the three weeks i actually haven't done much to be honest but the important thing is i learn how to navigate the other thing too is if there's any window you find is too large you can uh, change it just by the drag drop here so I could move this up and down and then you can also move things around by the little bar up here so I think that's all cool so let's go ahead and, and let's look at the characters first because I said what we would do that first and when we go into the characters you're gonna see that I have already a section for heroes and villains and what's cool is if you click on the tab here you actually have, have to click on the the folder then you can open up who everyone is so right now I've got Bob Smith is my hero so if I click on his name I'll pull up his character let us know obviously this is all over the place so I'll probably want to move things around a bit just so everything looks nicer um, the statistics and I made this in the last video I wasn't really sure what kind of statistics I wanted so this is where I might add the height weight so if I do that um, height and we can say five uh, inches or five foot, five feet. All right, so you have to have whole numbers, it looks like, to do this properly. If you just want weight, add stat. Weight. And we'll say he's 180 pounds. Or you can do LP, it doesn't matter, do what you want. If you do image and uh, Blaze and Pro are kind of the same, you just go and find something you like. And then um, let's say if I want, again, to say Bob looks like a plate of crackers. And I'll just put the image there. And now, now I know what Bob looks like. So again, depending on how fast your internet is, will depend on how fast this stuff moves. I don't know why this is red. Oh, I see why, okay. All right, so if your box is red, that means you've got something that's a little wonky. Good to know. All right, anyway, so if you saw Campfire Pro, you'll saw that, you, that I've had, um, f I think, four parameters. And actually, I think I said Bob Smith is going to be 23. If I uh, scroll down, you're going to see I have a lot of new options here. A lot of new options. And what's awesome, you know, some of you that probably won't use them all, but what's really cool is... It was in Philadelphia, uh, not Philadelphia. Um, what's neat is if you click on the, is it this one here? Oh, Manage Attributes section. You actually can go into this entire list, and when you have this selection, you can show what you want to, to use. So by clicking on any box, so like if I didn't want it to highlight his former name, I just untag that, but if I do want to do that, then I tag it. And what's neat about this, panel is it gives you all of these questions like it really just you know it, it asks questions you probably wouldn't have thought of on your own and so it makes it really easy for you to just pick something you know or to um you know really get to know who your character is and and uh just go from there so if you're having trouble making characters if you don't know what your character should look like or sound like or anything like that uh actually there's nothing on sound here but I guess that's something you could suggest to the makers of Blaze that they add. Um, so I'm not sure if you can add any extra attributes. That's one limitation I believe this has. Is I don't think um, it gives you the ability to do your own. It might, though. I'm sure if it's not something you can do now, I'm sure you can probably do it at some point in the future. 
Um, but I mean, there are just so many choices, and you'll see that I highlighted all of them in my last test. But anyway, you can kind of see that there's a lot here, and then I'm not going to add all those back in, but just for every one that you highlight, it's going to add a uh, parameter for you to select, and then you can decide how tall everyone actually is. So it's pretty cool, I think. Something to factor in. Now, we'll go ahead and I'm going to hop back into. Um, actually, I want to look at underwear in the character panel. Let's look at relationships real quick because this was not available the last time I used this. So, the way this will work is going to be kind of the same deal where you can add a new folder or add a new character. Um, and you just kind of pick what you want. And then you, know, you can always um, put them inside of each other if you want so you can nest it. Um, but you can kind of explore that on your own by just, if you click on it though, you're going to have the option to, you know, connect something. So if I had, actually, you know, let's real quick go back to characters. We may as well test it. So we'll do, um, we'll do a character called Jane Smith. All right, now let's do this for real. Jane Smith. We'll call her Bob's wife. And you know, once I fill in all the attributes, again, if I go to the Manage panel, let's say if I just want um, her name, choose. Well, that's all I've got now on the panel is her name is Jane Smith. There you go. That's everything. That's all we're going to define in her. So we might, I don't think I have a section for hair. So we'll say hair, she's blonde. And there you go. So we know Jane Smith is blonde. So if we go into the relationships, new relationship web. So we'll do add a button here. So if you go down to the little plus, you can add your button. And then this is very similar to what we saw in pro. So if I add Bob Smith, Chain Smith, choose. Now what I can do is see these little nodes here, so I can draw them and connect them. And then over here in the new colors, we'll call it Married. And maybe I want like a little red thing to show that they're married. So whenever I have, let's say if I have you know four characters and I want to know who's married to who. Um, if I go back to characters again, I'll add the villains now. Uh, actually, let's change Smith's hero. Villains, we'll do two more villains. Fred Jones. Fran Jones. But we'll do a new thread. And we'll put uh, Fran and Fred together. Choose. And we're going to... Um, Put them over here, and again, they're married. So now we're going to do a new section. No, nope, not delete color. We're going to do it up here. We're going to make it green. And this is going to be neighbors. Actually, going to do enemies, but we'll call them neighbors instead. So, in this case, Fred is both their neighbors. So, there you go. So, now I know who's connected to who and how. So, that's kind of an interesting little thing. And then if I move them around a little bit, you know, I can see a little more clearly. So, it's not quite so messy. So, if you find that you can't read what you just did, you can move things around. So I just I think that's pretty cool. I you know right there I, um, I I know probe has a similar function. Let me actually go back and just kind of verify that before I go to the next section. But um, yeah, it's you can determine who's who just by this little thing. So I think it's kind of cool. So anyway, we'll um, we'll go back to pro real quick. I'll just I'll look at the relationship panel one more time, and then we'll move on to plot and look at the differences there. Okay, so back in pro, we'll just again look at the relationships panel real quick since we actually haven't created a web yet. So you do have the relationship web in Campfire Pro as well. So if I want to add that, um, it'll open up our characters. So this is our web. 
Um, we're going to call this coworkers. The people who work together. Now I'm probably going to actually rebrand this to company name and then have all the different uh, connections in there that way. But for now we're just doing the test. So we'll add, um, I didn't want a new web. Hold on. Yeah, we'll delete. So as you can see, I'm trying to figure my way around that relationships panel. Um, so in Blaze, it was easier to figure out. In Pro, I'm still having a little bit of trouble. Uh, one of the good things about both programs is that there are tutorials available. And they really do help you figure out how to get through it. So if you're ever stuck, like I clearly was just stuck just now, um, you can always go to the tutorials and find out how to do things um, in a clearer way. So they can give you the uh, the YouTube video and then if you just go down and um, find what you're looking for then that helps so if I go into relationship view click on that you'll find that this is actually the way I'm supposed to use it so I have to click the add button in the sidebar so add them or this will add a new web and select it automatically and edit the title description and using the panel and click on the title and then to add characters, simply click on the large plus button in the navigation toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Is this for Blaze or for this is Pro? Okay, so if I go back to Pro, um, oh, here's the plus down here. Okay, so according to the tutorial, then I thought this hot bar was just for all the stuff that I have up here, but apparently this big button down here is important because when you click it, then you can open up what you want. So if I open up the character, now I can pick Nick. And stick them there in the middle, and then pick uh, Billy, put him there, and uh, we're going to call this um, not same department. Probably can think of a better way of labeling that later. But for now, it's going to be the, the not same department, and then we can just connect them based on that. And there you go. So that big plus down at the bottom is important. So just make sure that you do that. So I probably should have did my research before recording this, but that's how it goes sometimes. You can't find everything out that you want to because sometimes it's all about uh, testing. And look, this is real world. This is like, you know, you may go through the same thing when you test these items. You, you know, for all you know, you may get stuck. Well, it's probably an answer. You just have to find your way through. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, look at a few more points, and then we'll call this video over because I think it's running long enough, and you kind of get the point. Um, we'll do the rest of the items together, and then um, just so you can get a sense of what your the differences are. So if I go to Timeline on Pro, so clearly we're going to just add, uh, we can add a new Timeline, then add a new Plus, and hopefully, do we get to do a new, new Plus? Maybe do I just add, okay, and then I, so I think you have to click and then plus is how it works. So we'll do add an event, and I guess for now we'll just put that there, and then we'll add another event, put that there, and then we'll add a divider, since it's telling us to put one. So this might be where we separate our acts. Um, so if I want these two events to happen entirely in act one, uh, I may do that. So, uh, regarding what I would actually call this, I think we'll say inciting incident. Can't spell inciting incident. Um, Nick. It's an offer to work for a new lawyer. I'm not going to tell you how that actually plays out, but I think I do want to... Um, can I edit this? I'm not sure if I can add, if I can... 
What I don't want to do is I don't want to call on screen minor. Alright, so this is again where I would go back to my help screen and find out what the heck. <laughs> How do I change that? So, anyway, it's not really in the scope of this video um, to learn how to change it. Um, it's one of the problems I have with Blaze is I feel like Blaze is not uh, intuitive on the timeline either because I want to be able to change this to on-screen major because it's a major event. But for some reason, I can't seem to highlight that unless maybe do I have to click on there now does it work no nope. all right I'm sure there's a way I, uh, I I guess we'll just pop over there real quick all right so I just looked at the instructions and it does say that it's better to um, kind of stack them there's a particular order that it considers how the timeline works so you're gonna want to be able to organize that way but um, it looks like you have to double click when you double click on something, then you can enter into the description and then you can start changing things. So uh, if I don't want it to be on screen, I can change it there, minor, major, and so on. Um, and so this is where I would put all that information. So full description, uh, uh, Nick gets fired from the bookstore but only after he gets an opportunity to interview for a lawyer who's about to open his practice whenever he gets his office. And so that's the inciting incident. Again, no spoilers here. It happens pretty early in the story, so if you ever read it, you know you know it's coming. Um, but yeah, so you have to double click. And actually, I think I knew that because I had to do that for the location. So it's been a while since I've used this, so that's why I forgot. But you hover hover over it, then it gives you the full description. So speaking of um, locations, uh, well, we're going to jump over to the world section. I might actually know. I think I did this in Blaze. I don't think I did this here. Is it in world building. Yeah, I don't think I did this yet. So if I add a map, uh, this is where I would insert a picture. I think I'm not going to actually do this right now because I don't have a picture to upload. So, but yeah, I think this is where you put your pictures. Uh, there was a section for. for locations. Oh, hold on, go back to world real quick. Keep forgetting about those buttons. What does it say here? New location, that's what I want, okay. So I click on the new location and this will be called um, the most, actually let's do the bookstore. And double click. Now I can actually put in all my elements here. So it's going to be, it's not really a landmark. So you'll call it other, it's a business is what it is. Nick's first place of employment. You know, maybe geography might be good. Uh, located um, at the edge of town, um, right where people walk and distract those who live inside. Again, I can clean it up later. So you have all these little extra things here. And I would put that somewhere on the... Um, on the map. So what's cool about this is when you actually have a map then you would you would um, move the panel here. Mm, there you go, yeah. You would drag it and then I think you pin it to the map. So that's how it works. So then when you click on it of course you open up the window. So it's a little neat system. 
so if I had any a background map here, I would just put the bookstore over it. And you can look at the example videos that they have in the demonstrations to see exactly how they handle that. But it's pretty cool. But um, that's pretty much Campfire Pro uh, in a nutshell. If you uh, you can just continue to look at uh, different, uh, just you know, continue to experiment with what you have. And but this is the basic system of how it is. Um, Again, if you get the world building pack, that's the extra premium add on. So it's important to kind of see like what you can add. So if you have a new species, um, you know, let us know. I don't actually have one in this story, so I probably would want to delete that. But here's an example of what you might be able to include. So if you're building fantasy books or just something with, um, you know, something that that's requires some extra information, um, then this is where you would go and do that. Okay, so let's hop back over in a blaze real quick and just kind of you know, see one more time some of the differences and then we'll call it for today. And don't forget to save your work, which I'm going to do uh, now. Save. Okay, even though I'm not going to use species. So back in blaze, we'll go check out the timeline. Um, I can tell you right now I don't like the timeline in blaze. This is like my least favorite part. Um, I don't honestly get it at all. Um, it's just there's a lot of information on here. It's hard for me to navigate. You'll see that you have this little system down here, and I believe you're, if you see these little yellow dots, uh, this does give you a hint of what these things are. And so again, you can move these things around, but I just I think I believe the way this is supposed to work is like let's say if it's um, September 30 to October 1st, and I think this is how Pro does it too. And you see, like down here, this little bar here, 18 hours, 14 hours, whatever. Like it's so random. I have no idea. Like how am I supposed to decide what I want? Do I, you know, it's like it's very random. I have no idea. Like how do I get the right design? I have no idea. Um, so that's really wonky. They need to fix that. And there needs to be something more granular and easier to go. I know you can hold control and then zoom in and out. Um, and that does something different too, but again, it just gets really, really insane. No idea what's supposed to do with that. So anyway, go back to and click on the button here. This is how you can highlight particular moments in the story. Um, it does work the same way here as it does in the um, Pro, where you just double click, double click. Okay, maybe you don't double click. Maybe you just type it in here. I thought you could double click on this too. I thought there was a way, can I right click? No? Okay, never mind. I thought there was a way to do this um, by double clicking. I thought for sure I double clicked on it. But anyway, there's um, different buttons you have. Like you have like the little, um, you have these little things here. So this is going to be like your milestone, or what they call milestone. So that's why I had the inciting incident listed on this. Um, although I don't know why it happens to happen on April 1st, 1996. Clueless on that. Um, but you can navigate the timeline through here. But uh, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I really do not like how this is set up at all. And I just, the only thing I can think of is maybe if I like have two events happening on the same day, then I'll do another, another plus button here. And then um, maybe I have, I, I think this is how it's supposed to work. So I think I put one here, and I think I put one down here, and uh, let's say it's making it's having trouble wanting to be fixed. Um, Bob, let's just say Bob drinks coffee because again, it's about him eating and drinking coffee. Did this not? I think it's still a little sluggish on inputting. That's one of the problems I had in the uh, demonstration. You see how I, I, it won't lock for me? Like, I don't know what it wants me to do. Maybe it's just about uh, the fact... Oh, it's because I'm on main plot. Is that why? If I go to new plot line... Or me... Uh, no idea. I really... This, this whole timeline thing is just... Ridiculous. I have no idea how to use this. 
So this is one of those cases where I would definitely need to go back and read the instructions, and you might too. I can't tell you the first thing on how to make this work because this is the thing that I had the most trouble with um, during my beta day one video, and I'm clearly having a problem now too. Um, I do think the concept is fine because it does allow you to track when things happen, and that's all cool. But if like I don't know what the point is, it, what like seriously, what is going on over here? I don't know what the point is if I can't order this in the way that I need to. I just don't feel any of this is intuitive. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it on the other program either. This is where I think programs like Plotter do a much better job because everything in Plotter it just makes sense. It's like it's like right there. Um, you can drag it around. It's like it's designed in a way that just is intuitive. This is I don't even know what this is. So. This is the one area where I do not think either Campfire Pro or Blaze does a very good job. And this is kind of sad because this is your story. Like, this is where you're actually crafting your story. And if you can't make your story work because the buttons don't go where you want it to, I just, I don't know, I feel like it needs to be rethought. And maybe people know how to use it. I just, I haven't figured it out. And I don't have the patience to try. Anyway, um, with ARCs, this is something that Pro has. I haven't explored it fully, but if I uh, go into my uh, heroes here, um, I have to tag them in a timeline event to get started with ARCs. So this is where I would want to learn how to use my timeline because then I'm going to want to learn how he's growing. So let's, you know, we'll try it. Let's see if we can get it to work. Um, so if I go in... I don't know how, how to tag them. Um, maybe I'd have to go back into characters, I guess. If I go to, to Bob, Master Businessman. Um, did I go into the backstory for this? No. All right, let's see. Go back to interview. What did we do over here? If I hit this button. It's a new page. It's like a Excel. I don't need to do a new page right now. I just need to figure out how to do his timeline. So let's do this. Let's see if we can add a new timeline panel. Um, maybe a new links panel. And hmm. Add link to. Well, we'll add one to. We'll do Bob Smith and Bob's office and a cup of coffee. See what happens with that. Um, so. Call this Bob's stuff. All right. And I'll just move that over down here where we can have a quick access to it. And for some reason, I have all these other people on here. I don't know why. Why is Fred Jones on there twice? No idea. And if I do the general link, it's not a character in an event, it's... Um, event location? Maybe. Does that put me into the timeline? Who even knows? Who even knows? I don't know. That's my point. That's where I just feel like that's the one thing where this is not at all intuitive, and I wouldn't know the first thing about what to do. So this is where you need the instructions. So um, you know, if the video suggests that it does what you want, then I would say just you know, good for you. But I can't figure it out. So anyway, um, the world. I do have the locations in here. I like the way the locations are set up. So I think the locations are much clearer here because now. Um, I don't need to just have a map. I can have all of this too. So that's the one thing I like better about 
the um, Blaze version of locations because uh, it has the same drop down. Uh, you can <laughs> you can actually uh, show like different uh, models that it's got. Um, it's kind of cool here. Um, all right, so encyclopedia. I don't know if I haven't really explored that, but you know if you have it. Um, if I go to maps. Same deal with before. If I want a map, I have to add a map. And yeah, it works that way. But you know, as I said, the manuscript's not open yet. That's still in the waiting, but uh, there you go. So that's Blaze versus um, Pro. And um, you know, I again I, I think you know, there this has a lot of potential. There's you know, it's the same problem I had with day one. I, I just feel like there's some the timeline in particular makes no sense to me and and I, I may just need to go through and review how it's supposed to work because i think it's like play, playing the piano you know if you play a piano for the first time and you're not musically inclined you're gonna make it sound like crap and you know it's just it's just the way it goes you're you can try to bang on the keys as much as you want you're not going to make music you're going to make noise and i think with the timeline feature it's got that same kind of element where if you know what you're doing awesome but if you have no clue um, I would just, you know, this might be where you might want to try a different software for now. Um, it depends. So I do think it's worth looking at. I think both of them are worth checking out. Um, I think depending on your system, if you are a visual person, these systems really work well, especially in the character development. Blaze in particular, I think, is an excellent character um, de designer. And the relationship web, I think both are fantastic. Um, and the world building, I think, is really good, too. The plot... Ah, you know, <laughs> no, I, I again, if, if I can't figure it out, what's the point? <laughs> Why am I using it? <laughs> so, um, I mean, the plot's like kind of what the whole reason why you're writing a story. So these are the things I do hope they work out their kinks. And I hope that, you know, if, if maybe I'm just not intuitive enough, maybe I have to, you know, read the manual. And then sometimes you have to read a manual. I think the best writing programs, you don't have to read a manual. I think you can kind of figure it out based on the design. So that's just my take on it, but you may be different. But anyway, but that's um, Campfire Pro and Campfire Blaze together. Take a look at them both if you uh, if you feel inclined. Hope you got something out of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. Um, and don't forget to, to check out my series on Writer's Bookshelf, which is ongoing um, until Christmas and maybe longer, depending on how much you all like and give feedback. So on that note, have a great day and uh, stay safe and... Uh, you know, don't kiss your dog too much. All right, talk to you all later. Bye.